section. And I am definitely a shameless member of the Nerdy Neurology Club. <laughs> so with a, a son that's a neurosurgeon and a husband that's a neurologist and a long time old, old science teacher, I really appreciate um, your talk earlier, Dr. Friedland. And we're so thrilled to have such an expert here today, aren't we? It's so amazing. And we are so grateful to the business community and to our friends at the Virginia Early Childhood Foundation for hosting this important event. You know, the governor and I met in San Antonio when I was a pediatric occupational therapist and he was a pediatric neurology resident. Since then, we've had many different curves along those career paths, some more surprising than others, <laughs> like politics. But we continue excuse me, to dedicate our lives to ensure that children have a safe and supportive environment in which to achieve their full potential. We believe all children are capable of and deserve to enter kindergarten with the tools they need to succeed, no matter who they are or where they're from. In his book, No Greatness Without Goodness, How a Father's Love Changed a Company and Sparked a Movement, Randy Lewis, Senior Vice President of Walgreens, wrote that we can and should combine good business and good citizenship. Economically, we can do well and do good. Recently, the governor was in New York to talk to the bond rating agencies. He was pretty excited to talk about our growing economy with an incredibly low 3% unemployment, our AAA bond rating, and being number four in the country for business, on our way back to number one, of course. But do you know what he spent most of his time talking about? The most important investment we can make early childhood care and education, and the importance of workforce development, because today's children are tomorrow's workforce. As Gary so ably mentioned, more parents in the workplace means more families need access to high quality, safe, and affordable options. Today, as we heard, we have clear data on the importance of early childhood education. Forward-thinking business leaders who know this is a critical investment and bipartisan agreement that this is a top priority in the General Assembly. That's why we began research last winter to find an experienced leader to develop a strategic plan to improve early education. We are so excited to have nationally known expert and visionary leader, Jenna Conway, heading this initiative in a new role we are calling Chief School Readiness Officer. She's a Virginia native who, with a degree from Yale and an MBA from Stanford, intimately understands the economics of early childhood. And for the last six years, she did a little something special down in New Orleans and Louisiana, overseeing the transformation of their early education system. Last summer, the governor formed the Children's Cabinet and asked me to serve as chair, I think because I work for free. <laughs> So Lieutenant Governor Fairfax, the secretaries and members of the Governor's Cabinet, whose agencies serve Virginia's children, meet regularly with a goal of bridging silos, creating unified systems at the state level. Valued community friends and stakeholders like BECF make up the working groups who advise the Cabinet. Virginia currently supports school readiness through an array of early childhood programs under many agencies with multiple funding sources across both public and private sectors. Without a comprehensive business plan outlining goals, principles, and standards and legislation to carry it out, Virginia's ability to deliver improved outcomes for young children is limited. We are thrilled to be working with legislators from both parties, our cabinet, stakeholders from across the Commonwealth, and the business community to craft legislation for this upcoming General Assembly session with four key points in mind. First, recognize early childhood development as strategic to Virginia's overall workforce development and economic vitality. This is an investment in the workforce of tomorrow, and quality affordable child care allows parents to go back to school or increase hours. Unify and strengthen Virginia's birth to five early childhood care and education system, focusing on child care, Head Start, and Pre-K, so all children enter kindergarten with the tools they need to succeed from cradle to career. 
We want to better inform and support families by using a uniform quality rating system to strengthen accountability for programs that take public funds while ensuring equitable access to quality options statewide and promoting successful transitions to kindergarten and beyond. Finally, it is critical we support and incentivize local communities to increase access and improve quality in innovative ways through public-private partnerships. Since August, we've had great fun traveling over 2,000 miles across the Commonwealth for our back-to-school tour, visiting Head Start Pre-K Child Care and Elementary classrooms. We've been inspired by courageous local educators and elected officials working with business leaders to find solutions that fit their community's unique needs despite many challenges. We want to do everything we can at the state level to support these local collaborative efforts. From rural Head Start programs in Scott County to urban schools in Norfolk, we talk to educators, parents, and local leaders who are thrilled to see a strengthened, unified system at the state level. Now, we have an opportunity, a unique opportunity, to make a lasting impact on the lives of Virginia children and families, while also ensuring Virginia remains the best place in the nation to run a business. With the support of strong advocates like the Virginia Chamber of Commerce, we know we can achieve revolutionary results. Together, we are a powerful force for good. Education is not the filling of a bucket, but the lighting of a fire. Thank you for joining with us to ignite the spark that will burn brightly to lead the way for the rest of the nation to follow. Thank you all so very much. months ago on this topic, there are people that pick up causes and then there are people that are very passionate. You are clearly a leader that is very passionate about the topic and we really do appreciate it. Um, that concludes our program today. Um, I want to thank Barry and Kathy for once again putting an outstanding program for all of us. I'd like to thank our speakers, Dr. Freelander and Gary, and of course our first lady. We really do appreciate your time and your energy on this most important topic. As I was sitting there for the last hour and a half, I couldn't think of another public-private issue where the business community, where the elected officials, where the scientists and communities were all aligned at the same time. If you can name another, another issue, please tell me, but I can't. So we have all the right ingredients, all the right people, all the right institutions to move this forward. And if we don't, we're going to have ourselves to blame. Right now, I think we're the envy of this nation of having a state where we have all these stakeholders aligned on one particular topic. So that's our charter, that's our charge that we have to go forward. We cannot waste this particular moment by having everybody in the room, everybody who's a stakeholder that you can think of, all going down the same path. So with that, I wanna thank you all for being here today and please drive home safe. Thank you very much.